Welcome to Foster and Foster on Point. I'm Hayes Foster. And I'm Steve Foster. Today is January 16th, 2014. It's a Thursday. Today we're going to talk about Station 211 in Antarctica. Whether Station 211 um, is real, uh, I guess that's to be uh, determined at some point. That whole area is off limits. Um, you have to get permission from the United Nations to even enter that area at this point. Uh, it's just a protected natural natural area right now. So a lot of people have been discussing this here recently, um, in particular the Eric Snowden documents that have come out recently. Um, they've ciphered through some of it, and a website called WhatDoesItMean.com on January 11th ran the story. Snowden documents prove U.S. alien Hitler link stuns Russia. So this brought to attention a, a lot of people in the mainstream media. Um, they started discussing um, what these Snowden documents actually were getting at and what were the connections with um, the Antarctica, um, the years right after World War II, and if there was a chance that maybe even... Hitler snuck away on a U-2 boat down to Antarctica and um, may have a secret base down there. The, uh, the interesting thing is um, a lot of people, um, you know, most people have seen um, the Indiana Jones series, movies uh, that Spielberg did. There's actually some truth to those movies, um, you know, minus the Hollywood sensationalism. Uh, Hitler was actually fascinated with retrieving a lot of religious items such as the Spear of Destiny, the Ark of the Covenant. Um, that, that is documented. Uh, he used one of his henchmen, uh, Heinrich Himmler, specifically was in charge of a lot of uh, the retrieval of artifacts. He was also in charge of the... Antarctica building of a base and this this is pre World War II this is before the war even started and this you know Heinrich Himmler he was known for you know heavy occult activity um, he was known for summoning spirits at uh, one of the uh, one of the castles there it was called the uh, Quedlingberg Cathedral in Germany um, it, it's mostly, to me, it seems, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of talk and a lot of chatter on the internet, and I know we're kind of going on the hills of a few good shows, uh, from Coast to Coast AM with George Nori. Um, and also there's a book out right now by Jerome Corsi, uh, called Hunting Hitler. I would highly recommend. I haven't, uh, read it yet. It's, it's in queue for me to read right now. So I'd, I'd recommend that Jerome Corsi hunting Hitler. The interesting thing is, it seems like Station 211 was a backup plan in case the war did not go the way Hitler and the Nazis expected it would go. They were also fascinated with early civilizations, you know, obviously uh, the Aryan race, just, you know, they were fascinated with that. And a lot of these, you know, mythical lands such as uh, uh, New, New Schwabi land is, it was referred to, Atlantis, uh, Hyperborea. These, these particular civilizations were uh, antediluvian pre-flood civilizations that were most likely either wiped out by the Great Flood or... Um, if they did, in fact, get underground bases in place before the flood hit, there could have been some survival to these really just high-tech races. Many people believe these races were the offspring of man and fallen angels, as documented in Genesis 6 in the Holy Bible. I want to take a, a quick second and um, 
let everyone know that um, we're going to open up the call lines in the next 30 minutes. And if uh, you guys want to call in and ask some questions at any point, um, we'll cut you guys in and um, let you all shoot away some questions at us. The call-in number is 347-838-8131. If you call that, we can... We can um, move on from there. Um, so getting back to the whole Hitler connection to this, Hayes, um, I think that it's safe to say, though, that there's been multiple witnesses that said that right after in the time frame after Berlin fell that um, there was U-2 bolts that did merge in Antarctica, um, and they were actually captured and um some of them were brought up and um, put in front of a, a hearing in Washington, D.C. and questioned. Of course, Hitler wasn't found, but they did determine, though, that there was a lot of supplies on that, and there was a lot of people, and they were using a boat to ferry uh, some people, apparently, across from the YouTube out in the, the sea there back to the land. And what we did, well, some of our research that we've seen is that they think that he may have, Hitler may have even you know, lived in Antarctica in the years after World War II. That's one theory. And then the other theory would be that he made his way down to a more secretive base in Antarctica. And that might be why the uh, 1947 mission with uh, Admiral Byrd went down to Antarctica and to check things out. That And that's really where it kind of get in, interest in Hayes. And, and what do you know about, you know, the armada that went down there to, you know, supposedly do an expedition, but they brought in a whole fleet of, um, of boats just to check out um, Antarctica. Well, what we're looking at is um, around May 8, 1945, this is, um, actually, hold on, May 8, 1945 is when officially the Germans surrendered. Um, reported sightings of a U-boat in July of 45 and um, that that was seen off the coast of Argentina the um, let's see I'm trying to think of what the um, specific designation it was a U530 U-boat that was seen off the coast of Argentina <clears throat> so the thing is you know you're seeing German U-boats in South America off the coast after Germany's surrender, which is, you know, very concerning, especially since, uh, you know, the United States and the rest of the Allies are riding off of defeating the Axis powers. So, uh, you know, something like this to show up in the media, mainstream media um, in the United States or any of the Allied news sources would probably... It probably, I doubt it would see the light of day just because um, it, it wouldn't look good. But uh, what happened is in 47, Admiral Edward Richard E. Byrd, he, um, he was commissioned um, and tasked with going on an expedition to Antarctica to locate and destroy, if found, Station 211, a supposed Nazi base that was built pre-World War II. Um, he had, it was called Operation High Jump. You can uh, look this up on the internet. Uh, he had anywhere from 4,000 to 4,700 men, approximately 13 ships, and um, the, there were several that were aircraft carriers. Uh, he was, he had provisions for eight months. He came back in eight weeks because he was attacked by flying discs that were moving at high rates of speed and shooting lasers. Now, what, where, where'd you get that information from? Because I keep seeing that, and a lot of the evidence is coming from a, a journal and a diary that he kept. Apparently, he had a private diary. Um, I can't think of the author who published it. It was back in the, uh, I think, late 90s. Uh, so the, all this came out. 
which would make sense because it is undisputable that the Nazis, as far as their technology, um, you know, as far as aerodynamics, their jets, um, you know, we, you know, Hitler, uh, you know, he was very fascinated with this advanced, you know, technological prob um, programs. Um, and through Operation Paperclip, we brought in a lot of ex-German scientists to work for the United States. Uh, one famous one, you'll recognize his name, uh, Werner von Braun, the father of the space program in the U.S. Uh, Russia got a lot of the scientists too. Most of the scientists that they took in were more of uh, mind control uh, research, uh, things like that in, that in that particular study. We're going to cut to a, a quick commercial break and uh, we'll be right back. There's a place down in Tennessee Where they make blue diamond gusset jeans They so pride in every stitch Guarantee you love the way they fit They put a diamond gusset in the crotch Where you need it most Blue diamond gussets got it Others don't let me introduce to you a tactical supply company that we use, My One Supply. This company has all the military and police gear at one place. MyOneSupply.com has a wide selection of holsters, military clothing, backpacks, AR-15 accessories, and much, much more. We like My One Supply's wide selection, but what we like the most is their unique military surplus items they get directly from military bases. Check out MyOneSupply.com for their latest online specials. Hello, we're back. This is Hayes and Steven from Foster Brothers on Point. Uh, we're talking tonight about Station 211, Antarctica. Was there really a Station 211? Did the Nazis pre-World War II have time? To complete, uh, you know, such a massive undertaking. Because if you think about it, the extreme temperatures and climate, just the conditions you're dealing with, uh, you know, at the South Pole, um, everything's specialized. Uh, I'm sure any anybody out there who's lived in, you know, northern or extreme southern climates understands that it seems like when it's that cold, engines don't want to start, uh, things just don't want to cooperate. So one thing that Admiral Byrd, he, his whole family, he comes from a second generation Antarctic exploration family. So when he was brought up, you know, even his father was exploring the extreme colds. Um, Byrd's credited for uh, multiple records. He was the first one to fly over the South and North Pole. Um, and he was widely known as a, a great um, Arctic explorer. Um, even the Germans pre-World War II attempted to recruit them and they were going to see if they would go on some expeditions they were looking to go down so it's documented in fact that the the germans were you know actively exploring and trying to build little bases down in um the antarctica so you know there's there's a lot of um evidence that's emerged that kind of backs up this whole story you know there's a lot of facts here but you know the whole german connection and what they were actually doing down there so you're looking, you're thinking about Admiral Byrd, the guy, you know, he's got supplies for eight months. He shows back up in the United States in eight weeks with a fantastic story about flying disc, moving at supersonic speeds. Um, uh, later on publicly, and this, this isn't what he said. Uh, well, by the way, the congressional hearing with Admiral Byrd is sealed to this day, so uh, that's not available to the public. But um, he did say, uh, post Operation High Jump, that the U.S. Uh, faced a threat from flying discs that originated from the poles that can move at fantastic speeds. Now I'm paraphrasing that, but that's that's the gist of it. Uh, you know, now also 
to take it back to the Nazi technology, the United States confiscated uh, some aircraft that were flying disc. So we do know that the Germans for sure were working on this particular anti-gravity type technology. Now whether it was perfected at Station 211 in Antarctica, um, that's speculation at this point. Uh, we just know that it's, you know, like I said, the congressional hearing from Admiral Byrd is still sealed to this day, and that's Byrd, B-Y-R-D, in case you're wanting to uh, look that up on the internet. So the, what we find, though, is a lot of people want to know, basically, what happened during the expedition. You know, what are the details from the time they left port? They came down there and they turned back in those eight weeks. Something happened. Um, in fact, um, I've got here in my show notes that there was actually a casualties on this expedition along with they lost a ship or two in, along with some planes. Now, was this just a part of the hazards of going down to the Antarctica or did, you know, were they shot down by these discs? You know, what, what sort of information's emerged? Do we have any eyewitness accounts that's shown up years later? Congressional hearing at this point still sealed. Um, so, you know, unless there's somebody out there who has, you know, probably at this point it'd be secondhand knowledge, probably a story from a veteran or an uncle or a family member uh, that could give some insight to this. Uh, that that would be uh, well, then, really good to have. And, and here's where we come back to the news article that, you know, was published on January 11th. On a what does it mean dot com, where it says uh, there was shockingly, and this is from some of the Snowden leaked documents, and this is very interesting. It says, admittedly, the aliens quote have been visiting our planet for thousands of years, um, and it describes several types of these extraterrestrials, including what they call tall whites, who have been working with the U.S. Air Force in Nevada. I'm assuming they're referring to Area 51, probably. Um. I want to jump back. There's also another Argentina connection, which Argentina is a jump-off point for expeditions if you do decide to go to Antarctica. <clears throat> there was a uh, wealthy family that even pre, pre-World War II was financing Hitler. Um, also, just a side note, some of the other financiers of Hitler include the Federal Reserve, the Bank of England, Reichsbank in Germany, and Bank de France. Uh, all, all three of these entities were, in fact, funneling money to the Nazi regime. But the wealthy family in Argentina, and their name uh, slips me right now, uh, they had established a hotel um, a little bit north of the tip of Argentina and this hotel still stands to this day you can go down there and visit it you know now yes sir uh, it, it, it just type that I don't even have the internet pulled up or I could give you probably the name of it uh, but it, it's it was known that uh, a lot of high-ranking Nazi officials visited this hotel um, it was um, believe it, it it may it may or may not have been on one of the Patagonia islands uh, that I'll have to look that up too so uh, you know what what you're looking at is there is an Argentina connection um, and these u-boats showing up in July of 45 after the German surrender uh, very suspicious uh, just you know something that you know you don't hear a lot about these days, um, but the technology that the Germans, that actually we uh, took from Germany, affect most everybody to this very day. So, so kind of what we're looking at here is, is a couple of scenarios of importance. Um, one with the Snowden documents, you know, the possibility and, and you know, using these phrases like uh, alien beings, well, that's a whole other subject, but you know what if, what if Hitler did make an escape I mean he was awfully you know a powerful man very clever a um, lot of technology a lot of intelligence behind that country you know it would make sense that there would be a plan B 
there's also been um, some controversy over his body. You know, they said that he took cyanide, and they say they shot himself. Um, uh, yeah, a lot of that, a lot of the uh, recovery from the, you know, finding Hitler's body and uh, his wife at the time, he, he was just, I believe, married a few days before uh, they claim he committed suicide. The Russians took over the eagle's nest. They claim they found two bodies in the rubble, that one was Hitler and the other uh, was his new wife, that they had committed suicide. Most recently, it was said that these uh, bodies, one of them was actually, the one that was supposedly Hitler was too tall. So that apparently discredited that. The, um, and this is all, you know, from verbatim Russia. Um, I believe we may have a caller. We'll see if we can cure up. We can, uh, we can see if we can get this caller to come in. Okay. Just bear with us, folks. We're, uh, it's our first show, so we're uh, still messing around with these controls here and trying to figure out what everything does. But this subject is just one of the, in my opinion, one of the best um, subjects that there's not a lot of information out there. There's a there's a handful of books. Um, you know, I recommend studying it up on it uh, just to get, you know, versed on it. Um, hold on, it looks like we're not going to be able to bring in the caller. We apologize for that. Um, we'll work that out for the next show. Yeah, it's we're, um... we're figuring out the software and this... Uh, and the board here in front of us. So the, you know, in part of the research for the show, Hayes, I, I started looking into, you know, Hitler's death and, you know, was, was anyone trying to contradict the remains of his body? And if, if in fact it was, well, apparently the Russians were the ones that obtained the bodies and the remains. Well, apparently they didn't just obtain one body. They were obtained multiple skulls um, that, you know, could have potentially been Hitler. And what they determined later on, I think it was in the 90s, they had a, um, a specialist, a forensic specialist, that actually got permission. And this, I think they even made a documentary show about this, where they went out there and started testing it, and they determined that the ages didn't match for many of the skulls. And in fact, one of the skulls was actually a female skull. So his conclusion was that it was not Hitler for age reasons and for gender reasons. So there you go. You have another you know, his point of fact that would actually point towards that maybe he didn't, you know, perish in Berlin. Now, there's also been some uh, discussion that he was uh, airlifted. They had some experimental hair, uh, helicopters um, that they were developing, and they think that they may have lifted him outside of Berlin and flew him to Spain, and from Spain is where he would have, you know, got onto a U-2 to head down towards Argentina. That had been a U-Boat 530 um, is the one. Actually, the one that was uh, reported off the coast of Argentina in July of 1945, post-Germany's surrender. Uh, and, and, you know, here's the thing. Uh, there's a lot of propaganda out there. Um you know, just, you always have to do your own research. Uh, don't take our word for it. Do your own research, and um, it's just, uh, it's your responsibility. If you want to know about something, look it up. Read. And, you know, there there is a lot of information out there. Um, you know, YouTube, and of course, you got to filter through it. You know, there's something that you come across, and you're like, this just doesn't add up. And, you know, you can just kind of put that in your back pocket and say, you know, I couldn't confirm this, and I'm not going to believe that. But what is interesting is um, how it's still off limits, and you actually have to get permission. And it's con is it controlled by the UN? From the UN to even go into Antarctica. So you know, the whole Antarctica, the Admiral Byrd, the Hitler connection. And now they're even talking about you know the UFO connection with the Snowden documents. It's just a fascinating subject. Um, to you know be aware of yeah and I believe we're coming to the end of our show right now um, 
How many seconds we got left over there? Uh, we got about 17 seconds. All right, about 17 seconds. Um, yeah, there, there, there is a UFO connection. Uh, this advanced technology has been around, you know, since the, you know, beginning of World War II. How, how the Nazis obtained the technology, we don't know. Um, were they in contact with extra dimensional, you know, extraterrestrials, fallen angels, whatever you want to call it? Um, that is uh, still on the table right now to this day. By the way, we've we've gone into the extended um, segment of our show, and this segment will only be available via YouTube and through an upload from our website. So if you are listening live, uh, you're no longer with us, and this is now um, the extended segment where we're going to get a little bit more into the Fallen Angel segment. And the uh, that particular segment, or the thought is this. Um, Hitler and a lot of the uh, top SS commanders were very much into the occult. Uh, they thought that they were summoning um, some of the descendants of, uh, you know, their their home, Deutschland. Uh, the problem with any kind of summoning of spirits is you don't know if you're going to get a malevolent or benevolent spirit uh, that could lie to you or they may tell you the truth uh, so it, it is it's definitely a gamble with that kind of uh, you know when you're dabbling in the spirit world uh, a lot of people think that uh, the whole uh, eradication of the Jews was not a random thing it was a satanic sacrifice, a blood sacrifice that would open up portals to receive advanced technology, that advanced technology flowing from Lucifer's fallen angels. Well, and this, there's a lot of this actually still occurring in the United States. You know, the whole Bohemian Grove, um, Alex Jones kind of spearheaded that and brought that to the public light um you know we've seen tom horn come in and, and talk about the fallen angels and he's gotten really into that and he's kind of led the way on that and, and you know la marzulli has brought a lot to the table as well um i want to thought hagman and hagman you know that they're on blog talk radio as well as, as with us and um they cover a lot of these subjects that that we're trying to touch upon ourselves um, but it's important to know that this is still alive. It's still active. Um, this didn't end in the 30s and 40s with the Nazis. You know, this has moved forward. And it can be confusing because the governments are so secretive. They close documents. Um, the whole secretiveness, sometimes with government, you can't always understand um, what their angle is. You know, without the informa with all the information, it's hard to understand. That's why the Snowden documents really... Um, brought to everyone's attention some of these little things that we were just overlooking. We thought were probably happening, but now we know for sure. And, you know, they, um, you've got um, various alphabet agencies spying on uh, not just U.S. citizens, but citizens and governments around the world. And um, so there, there's always been that level of secrecy. Um, I guess we're going to wrap up today's um, edition, January 16th, 2014, edition of Foster and Foster on Point. Thank you for tuning in.